Hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough! Now that we have our deck all powered up from our booster packs, we can go ahead on over here to knock out two of the three members here. Well, there's technically four members of the Grass Club, but anyway, yes I am! I don't think she's here at the club at the moment. No, she's not. She would be up over by those planter boxes on top of the screen, right in about the center actually. Would you like to take care of the plants? Well, no, but I would like a duel. We could duel with cards if you prefer. Yes! Thank you for listening to me! Alright, let's duel! Bring it on! Oh no, I most certainly won't. Now, her deck, the Flower Garden deck. What she likes to do is control the battle by paralyzing your Pokémon with uh, stuff like Lickitung and Oddish, stuff like that. Uh, but they're Grass-type Pokémon and you have Fire-type Pokémon, so chances are they're not going to last all that long. But uh, I don't really have Fire Pokémon in this opening hand, which is unfortunate, but as I said, the beginner deck that you have is pretty junky, so you can only do the best that you can with what you have. Let's see who plays first. Alright, it's me, I got fire that has no no help for me whatsoever, and I will hopefully paralyze. Yes! Yeah! And this is why you want those kinds of Pokemon that prevent other Pokemon from attacking. You want to be the one doing the attacking, not letting your opponent do the attacking, if at all possible. <laughs> because you know it's based off of uh, coin flips and whatnot, so don't expect that you're gonna be able to do this sorts of thing. Uh, consistently, but it's just a thing of that. It's nice to have the ability to paralyze or, you know, cause all sorts of status effects because it just is useful in turning the tide in your favor. And she's going to be able to do a leech seed. Oh no, she decided not to. Uh, that's kind of interesting. And oh wow, this is this is actually turning out pretty nice here. I'm going to evolve Rat Rotata into Raticate, and hopefully this will paralyze it because, I don't know. I was going to say, it'll knock out Bulbasaur uh, next turn then, because it won't be able to attack and recover with Leech Seed. Leech Seed does uh, 20 damage and it recovers 10 damage, unless the, there's some sort of uh, status differences or whatnot. And, okay, Fire Energy to Raticate. Raticate is a colorless Pokémon, so it can use any type of energy. I am just going to attack it with my Magnemite and then off the turn. Attacking is always, always the last thing you can do each turn. Always remember that. Don't think you can attack, then play a trainer card or something. Do everything you want to do before you attack. Got it? Good. And there's one of the sorts of paralyzing things that I was talking about uh, in the form of Stun Spore. But what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to retreat to eradicate and attack with a... Actually, should I... Yeah, I think I'll attach Fighting to uh, Machop, and then I will attack with a Super Fang. Uh, Super Fang, it does damage equal to half the opponent's Pokémon's HP that's left, rounded up to the nearest 10, so this will do 30 damage. How do you like those apples? And... Will you be able to take on my Rathfink? I doubt you can, unless you paralyze it. Nope, not a chance. <laughs> Now, um, you probably want to use Bites on the next turn whenever- I mean, when there's a Pokémon that has 20 HP left, because Super Fang's only gonna do uh, 10 HP, and that will make you sad. Uh, I could search for a Fire Pokémon, but I'm doing pretty well here, so I'll hold on to Computer Search uh, for now, and just start powering up Diglett there and do my Bite Attack. Bite is the same as the Bite that Rattata has, and there we go, Lickitung! is up next, another paralyzing type of Pokémon. Kind of annoying, actually. Uh, because it's got a lot of HP and it's got a lot of stalling powers. So yeah, I'm probably going to uh, switch over to Machop just to speed this along for my own advantage, and maybe I'll grab a, um, a Machoke from the deck, maybe. I'm not sure about that though just yet. But one thing's for sure, I'm sure I'm definitely going to switch over to Machop. I could switch over to Diglett and uh, do 3 damage if I had another Fighting Energy, but nah, let's just keep it going here with Machop, because I don't really want to use a computer search for Fighting Energy, it seems kind of wasteful to use a computer search for an energy card, even if it can help. I have used uh, computer searches on energy cards before, but uh, only in dire circumstances, and uh, unfortunately Machop is paralyzed, so I gotta end my turn. That's okay, stupid licking son of a. Forget, forget it, bitch. Calm down. 
You are not Dr. Mason Peak again. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Pokemon Breeder! Oh, no! That's bad. That's a very powerful Pokemon! <laughs> At least this early in the game. Maybe I should get myself a fire Pokemon and prepare for that monstrosity of Venusaur. Ah, oh, poopers. Uh, hopefully I'll get like a Magmar or something like that. See, Venusaur here has got Energy Transfer, which will allow her to move Grass Energy cards attached to other Pokemon to Venusaur or other Pokemon as she sees fit. And it's also got a Solar Beam, which does 60 damage, so that's a pretty dangerous critter there. And it's also got 100 HP, so don't... <laughs> don't be, uh... Uh, um, stingy with being careful with that one. Anyway, what I'm gonna do here is this softball Doug Trio and Lightning Energy for... Hopefully I'm gonna have a Magmar in here, because I only had one Magmar in the deck. And if a Magmar is a prize card, that would suck. Okay, there we go. And hopefully I'm gonna draw a uh, Fire Energy card along the way here. Because uh, I got the Fighting Energy ready for it. Uh, so I can use Flamethrower later on when uh, Venusaur most likely will hit the field. So yeah, it's, it's a matter of strategy, just watching your opponent's moves and responding to them. That is the key to trading card games. We gotta switch. But first, I'm gonna power up Magmar and low kick. Urgh! Okay, it's got 10 HP left. Any Pokemon will be able to knock out Lickitung at this point now, so... Uh, it doesn't really matter if it gets paralyzed, although it'll burn a turn, which is which would be unfortunate. Come on, fire energy, fire energy, yes! Not very, very, very nice. Now, if she puts out uh, Venusaur, she is going to be in a load of trouble. Oh, I got more fire here. Oh, she put out Venusaur. She hasn't been paying attention at all. And that will be her undoing, because Venusaur is weak to fire. I'm going to retreat Machop for Magmar. I'm going to attach this fire energy for kicks, and I'm going to attack with Flamethrower, which will do exactly 100 points of damage because of weakness. <laughs> I win! <laughs> Woo! Success! Yeah, she didn't play that all that well. She should have been powering up uh, Venusaur in the bench while stalling with other Pokémon, but she failed. <laughs> Let's see here, I got the evolution booster pack, so I guess she gives out evolutions, and oh my god, Blastoise! The greatest water Pokemon of this particular card generation, look at this. If you're playing a water deck, Rain Dance, Pokemon Power, as often as you like during your turn, you may attach one water energy card to one of your water Pokemon. This breaks the game. <laughs> I can't... I can't tell you how powerful this thing is. You have to see this thing in action, and I am most certainly going to be building a Rain Dance deck just to show you the power of Blastoise, but I don't have the cards to build it right now, so I'm gonna have to hold off. Um, it, it can't be used when it's got the status effect, but whatever. Uh, Hydro Pump, if it has five energy cards attached to it, it will do 60 damage. <laughs> That's another thing, but most of the time you're going to want just Blastoise sitting on your bench with nothing on it, and then using it to power up other Pokémon, such as, say, Gyarados, Articuno, uh, Dugong, those sorts of Pokémon, you know, to keep Blastoise's energy uh, powers flowing in as much as you possibly can. But I'm so glad I got a Blastoise, that is phenomenal. Alright, so, um... Ivysaur's attacks are pretty self-explanatory. Poison does damage to 10, 10 damage per turn uh, between turns. Let's see here. Same with the Poison Powder. Uh, Butterfree is not a super good Pokemon, but it can be okay early game if you get it out because it's disruptive with Whirlwind and it, you can heal with Mega Drain. And it has 70 HP, which is not a lot of damage that uh, early game critters. I'm gonna be, I mean, people that I'm gonna be showing you uh, will be able to pull off, which is cool. Uh, yeah, Whirlwind lets you switch Pokemon of uh, the opponents, and yeah, uh, Geo Dude can do a ton of ton of damage, but. Most of the time, you only get like 10 or 20 out of it. <laughs> oh, Gust of Wind, fantastic card. Allows you to switch your opponent's Pokémon of your choice. Uh, this is kind of an iffy version of Ghastly, in my opinion. It's There's another better version of Ghastly, I think, that I would prefer using over that one. This is a special version of Jigglypuff with a Game Boy, by the way. 
Uh, yeah, I'm just going through these here, and here's another evolution booster pack. Oh, there's Gengar. Evolution of Ghastly. Well, final evolution of Ghastly. It goes Ghastly, Haunter, Gengar. Uh, Gengar is not too bad of a Pokémon, because you can actually uh, manipulate the damage counters of opponent's Pokémon. Um, and Dark Mind also lets you manipulate damage counters by attacking Pokémon on the bench. So it's a, it's a techie kind of Pokémon, but it's, it's a Pokémon that doesn't allow the opponent to escape easily. Uh, Kingler is a decent Pokémon. Sorta, of, kinda, of, but it could be better. I'd prefer some other waters, in my opinion. Um, let's see here. If you want to go for Beedrill, that's not too bad in a Poison type of deck, and you're gonna need Kakuna to do so, or uh, Weedle and po uh, Beedrill and Pokemon Breeder. But uh, I don't know. I don't really have the cards for that. I'm just gonna be using what I can get at the moment in time. Oh, there's a Weedle. <laughs> Uh, being able to poison with just one energy card is actually pretty effective, so if you're playing grass, you might want to throw in the Weedle if you got one just because. Um, energy Search is a pretty interesting card. It lets you thin your deck out so that you have better probability for drawing other cards. And if you're playing a multi-energy deck, you can also use it to pick the energy card that you want. So Energy card is so energy Search is sort of like an energy card in on itself that you, get to, that you get to choose, except it can only search for basic energy cards. It can't pick up stuff like double colorless energy or whatnot, or energy cards in later versions of the game that you won't see in this one, because this is only the first three sets of the game. Any <laughs> anyway, let's move on here. Um, filling up your bench is good for stuff like, just like reserves, or if you're trying to do like a Wigglytuff deck. Uh, I'll explain Wigglytuff later once I get one, but Wigglytuff does damage, um, 10 damage plus 10 more damage for each Pokémon on your bench for 3 energy, so if you have 5 Pokémon on your bench, it'll keep doing 60 damage turn after turn, it's pretty powerful. Oh, and you know Eevee, you know that Gas Ghastly. Okay. Um, yeah, I suppose it is a little bit. Alright, so, uh, so there's three people that we need to look for, but wh where's the third one? What? This is crazy. Well, if you didn't notice, there's this place right over here. Oh, look at this. Look at this. There's another, another sort of wing here. Oddish, Oddish, Roly Poly Oddish! Oddish is so Roly Poly and so cute! I'll give you this vile plume if you give me an Oddish. I would most certainly like the trade because I happen to have an Oddish. I th wait, don't I have an Oddish? Oh, I don't have an Oddish? Really? I thought I had an Oddish. Huh. I thought I got one. Oh, whatever. Well, come back here later. There's three different trades that this girl will have. The second trade will give you a special level 16 version of Pikachu that's a promotional card. Very rare, so you most certainly want to trade for it. It, it gives... it's a... you trade a Clefairy for a Pikachu, and then the trade after this uh, is Charizard for Blastoise, and you already know those two cards. So, uh, the, the only one that you're really looking for or to get to is the second trade for that special Pikachu. Uh, only girls are allowed to join the Grass Club. Sounds very familiar again! <laughs> but we're not accepting applications now anyway, sorry. Uh, I really love this dual hall. There's so much greenery and so many beautiful flowers. And these two girls at this uh, receptionist desk thing here, uh, this is a thing that you can do with link cables and whatnot, the battle friends as well as... Uh, uh, yeah, all this sorts of stuff and stuff, it's all self-explanatory here that you do with other people, but I can't really show that in the walkthrough. And here's some more bookshelves if you would like to uh, check out this sort of kind of stuff, and yeah, if you would like your call, uh, I guess I'll click through it here really quick, it doesn't take that long to go through. Just uh, pause or rewind whenever you want to read. I already know all this stuff, so it's not really that big of a deal for me. I'm just pointing out that uh, in, ca in case you would like to check it out yourself. So, this last girl that I haven't talked to yet, who is she? She's the last person that we're looking for. Brittany, taking care of plants is hard work. <sighs> Let me rest for a while. Who? The master of the glass club? Do we, Nikki? Nikki's out. I need a break. You wanna play the Pokemon trading card game with me? Why? Yes, I would! That sounds good, because I'd like to find Nikki if you don't mind. Okay, single match of four prizes. Let's start! And her etc. deck uses, I believe, a grass and uh, psychic type deck. I was gonna say grass and psychic, but no, it's, I believe it's grass and uh, psychic type deck. So, some of your fighting Pokemon using the Charmander and Friends deck might not be. Oh my, I've only got Charmander. I hope I get another basic, otherwise, I'm toast! <laughs> but we'll see how things go. 
Hopefully. Oh, okay, at least I can go first here. Okay, Fire Energy card. Well, that's decent, actually. She's got two Pokemon on the bench. Yeah, she's using... Oh, God, she's got a Jinx right off the bat. Jinx is a pain. Um, it, it can do up to 20 damage with that. That's not that bad. But, uh, Meditate here. That's... That's the attack that's gonna get you. Plus, it's got 70 HP, so that's gonna give you a little bit of higher... I mean, 70 HP, yeah. So, anyway, uh, it's got weakness to fire, so I'll be able to knock out Oddish relatively quick. Uh, I just hope it doesn't paralyze Charmander, and I really, really want a basic Pokémon to take the pressure off of me not having any Pokémon on the bench, because if Charmander goes down, I lose the game. <laughs> I got a full heal card here, so um, I don't really have to worry about paralysis that much to an extent. I just- oh, okay, Professor Oak, that is a big, big help. Because uh, I'll be able to do the whole discard my hand thing and grab myself a bunch more cards. But first, I'm going to attach this to this. I'm going to get the most out of my hand, basically. Uh, use plus power to increase the damage of my next attack by 10. And I'm tempted to, tempted to evolve Charmeleon, but uh, I think I'm going to hold off on that because she, she is not going to be able to knock out Charmander no matter what she does. So I'm not going to use Professor Oak just yet. I'm going to... Use an Ember, and then uh, on the next turn, I think I'll evolve to Charmeleon, uh, because I just wanted to get the most out of my hand there this turn, because I got another plus power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, actually, I, mm -hmm. I, hope I'm not, I hope I'm not pushing things here, because I most certainly don't want to put Charmander into a, uh, a bad situation. Uh, by the way, Jinx isn't attacking be with that one energy because Double Slap requires a Psychic energy, so yeah. Uh, let's see here. What I'm going to do is just attack with a Scratch and hope for the best. <laughs> I don't think she'll be able to knock out uh, Charmander, so okay. Prepare Charmander. Uh, defending Jinx with Defender, that'll reduce the damage of my next attack by 20, so I won't be able to knock out Jinx no matter what I do. However, I will evolve to Charmeleon and get this bad boy set up. Pikachu on the bench. Um, well, actually, I could knock out Jinx with Charmeleon if I use Flamethrower, but that just seems kind of like a waste of a Fire Energy card when I could just wait until the next turn. Oh, wait, 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 hold on, I could use plus power and then use a slash attack. Ah, oh, 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 and I should probably wait until uh, the next turn to evolve Pikachu into Raichu, just again, to make the most out of my hand. So here we go, slash attack. Make the most of your hand before playing Professor Oak, basically. That's, that's what I like to say when it comes to Professor Oak, unless you absolutely have to use Professor Oak. Okay, do a little scratch, a little scratch damage. And now we are going to evolve, and I don't have to switch. Uh, switch allows you to switch your Pokémon with your uh, with a bench Pokémon, no matter what the conditions are. Even if your uh, Pokémon is currently paralyzed or confused and couldn't retreat or something like that, yeah, that is the power of Switch. Anyway, I'm going to use Professor Oak. Here we go. The most broken card of all time! <laughs> let's see what we got. Uh, let's put Magmar on the bench. Um, I guess I could bench everyone, I suppose. And I should probably flamethrower just to get Charmander out of the way here before it evolves and gives me all sorts of ire, like I'm giving her all sorts of ire with Charmeleon. Oh! Arcanine! If only I had a. A Growlithe here. Our canine is just a fantastic Pokemon. Alright, let's move on. And Ghastly, that's gonna go down next turn unless she does something that'll prevent me from attacking. Uh, that's not gonna help. Because <laughs> I'm just gonna use Slash, which is three colorless energy, and that will be the end of it. So, uh, yep, it looks like that is all. Woo! What do I get? What do I get? What do I get? I get a Diglett, but it doesn't really matter, because that was the last prize card, which means I win the game! Woo! And that takes care of all the members of the Grass Club. Alright, let's see what kind of booster pack we get here. You get mystery packs from her. 
Make notes of it. Oh, Aerodactyl! Fantastic card for a basic Pokémon strategy, or a quick setup strategy here. Prehistoric power here. You won't use- I mean, uh, you don't necessarily use Aerodactyl for, for attacking, but you use it for its prehistoric power. It prevents your everyone from evolving Pokémon. So if you get a Pokémon out faster than your opponent, or you have superior basic Pokémon than your opponent's Pokémon, you've pretty much won the game! <laughs> well, okay, maybe not. Uh, because, you know, basic Pokémon have their limitations and whatnot, and Wing Attack only does 30 damage, by the way, and it's only got 60 HP, it can be Gust of Winded out of your bench, so be careful of that. Uh, Dratini doesn't look like a very good Pokémon, but oh man, its its second evolution is phenomenal. I love its Dragonair evolution. Hopefully I'll get one of those bad boys along the way. Omastar is pretty hard to get out and not really all that worth it in my opinion, despite it being a stage 2 Pokemon. Uh, it just doesn't have a lot of HP, it's got a lot of those coin flipping stuff and yeah. Uh, Parasect, kinda iffy, only 60 HP, although it's Spore, it's signature attack, uh, will keep Pokemon at bay. Uh, it'll, uh, Paris also has a Spore here, but it's just as vanilla overall as Parasect. It's, it's, Paris is almost like a mirror of Parasect, only Parasect does 30 damage and Paris does 20 damage, and of course their HPs are different, so yeah. Uh, Voltorb doesn't have much potential in on itself, but its evolutions might. I'll get into them a little bit later on as I collect them. Oh, Vile Plume. Not bad. This is the card I was going to trade for. Um, trade Oddish for Vile Plume. Uh, but, you know, I don't really have an Oddish. Oh, wait, did I get an Oddish? I don't... I'm forgetting if I got an Oddish again. Uh, Heal isn't too shabby of a card. I mean, Heal isn't too shabby of a move, but Pedal Dance has some potential for some very high power, because it can do up to 120 damage with just 3 uh, grass energy, but typically it does 40 or uh, 80 damage. You don't really expect it to do 0 or 120 all the time. It's very rare. Um, these Game Boy versions of Eevee Evolutions are really fantastic, because you can put them in a deck with Eevees, like you can have Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon, and you can cover elemental types of Pokémon weak to electric, fire, and water, uh, just because they all use um, colorless energy to power their attacks, but they're still um, elemental Pokémon, so you're still going to be benefiting from the type advantages um, of EV Evolutions, but you don't have to worry about the energy card requirements of other versions of EV Evolutions. Uh, right on! And not bad, I guess. I mean, it's got a lot of HP, but it's kind of haphazard. Uh, see, it's 3 energy for 30 damage is not very good. And 40 for 50 is probably its best attack, but it does 20 damage to itself, but it does switch the opponent's Pokémon. So its disruptiveness might be beneficial to your deck, if you would like to give that a try, if you have a Rhyhorn uh, to go along with it. Farfetch is a really weird Pokémon here. Leak Slap does 30 damage for 1 and Pot Smash does 30 damage for 3. What's the point of this? Well, you can only use Leak Slap once, and it may or may not work. <laughs> <laughs> and Pot Smash does 30 for 3, so it's it's kind of a beatdown Pokemon if you get lucky, but at the same time, mm, it's really, really haphazard, so be careful of using that. And I got Psychic Energy in the middle of a pack, that's kind of weird, you usually get, you usually get those at the end of a pack. Uh, Vulpix turns into Ninetales, and there's two versions of Ninetales, both are kind of solid cards uh, to look out for, so you might want to uh, check them out, and uh, the, the confusion effect of Vulpix might make it actually worth splashing into a deck, an early game deck, if you don't have much deck structure like my deck, because I still have an early game deck and whatnot, so yeah, um, it might just come in handy for you basically, and I got Shield Paris, oh, Shield oh my god, did I see energy removal? Did I see energy removal? Uh, the Shelter and Cloister line are not all that good, by the way. I'm just gonna mention that to you now, but it's up to you if you want to use them. They don't have very much HP and their attacks don't do much damage. They're mainly used to try and stall. Uh, Mysterious Fossil is the thing that turns into uh, Kabuto and then Kabutops, and it also turns into Ammonite, then Amastar and it also turns into Aerodactyl, so it's the key to the Aerodactyl deck, and it's also, it's played as like a basic Pokémon with a mere 10 HP, um, but it doesn't count as a knocked out Pokémon if it gets knocked out, so despite it being a training card, it's actually a Pokémon, or it plays as a Pokémon, but it's not actually a Pokémon, but it's used to create Pokémon, it's a 
kind of a weird card, but it's a pretty handy card. <laughs> but oh my god, energy removal! One of the best cards in the game right here, and it's a common. I'm hoping to get four of these bad boys in my deck. You can discard energy cards attached to your opponent's Pokémon, including stuff like Double Colorless Energy. You have no idea how good this card is unless you play it, because it is so disruptive. Because it stalls out the po opponent's Pokémon from using attacks, it can sometimes lock them down. Phenomenal! Phenomenal! And, uh, oh by the way, Nikki is visiting Ishihara's house. You'll probably find her there. Ah, thank you. So, let's leave here and head over to Ishihara's house, over here at the upper left corner. And over here, there's a whole bunch of books you can check out if you would like. Too many, I'm not gonna read through them, but here's Nikki. I'm Nikki, the Grass Club Master. What? You were looking for me? Oh my, I'm very sorry to keep you waiting. I was doing a little research here. I assume you'd like to duel. I only duel at the club. I'm sorry. Would you, could you meet me at the Grass Club? I will head back to the Glass Club. Glass Club? Grass Club and wait for you there. Alrighty. And so she goes. And so I go as well. And so yeah, this place is kind of like the a place of information here if you'd like to check out some stuff. But I am going to head on over to the Grass Club once again. Go up here. And there she is! I am going to battle her in the next part! I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you then!